Victims of various offenses have to deal with what happened to them. They have to find a way to cope with the injustice, feelings of retaliation. They have to overcome fear and try to move on. This is where restorative justice comes into practice. Restoring the victim to where he or she was before the crime occurred is a restorative justice goal. There are two ways to how victims can respond to any harm done to them. When turned to retribution, people will address moral wrong through punitive sanctions, while with restoration, people address the harm done through reparative sanctions, such as confronting the offender. We will now focus on the latter. Restorative justice can be seen as a harm-centered approach, in which both victim and perpetrator are confronted with each other. In contrast to conventional justice that is law and punishment oriented. Also, there is a role, an obligation, laid out for the community. The aim of this approach is to offer the victim a possibility to confront the perpetrator and hereby ease the process to overcome difficulties, fear or certain feelings and to give the offender a chance to restore the damage that has been caused by the offence. It is also a way for the offender to reintegrate, to take part of life as it should be and to become a successful member of society, most often when punitive sanctions have already been administered. How can restorative justice be defined? Tony Marshall's definition of restorative justice, a process whereby all the parties with a stake in a particular offence come together to resolve collectively how to deal with the aftermath of the offence and its implications for the future, seems to capture every part of what the restorative justice approach consists of. Though, McLaughlin has been more explicit about elemental features when we take a look at restorative justice. These are the critical components. Crime is fundamentally a violation of people and interpersonal relationships. Victims and the community have been harmed and are in need of restoration. The key stakeholders in justice are the victims, offenders and the affected communities. Violations create obligations and liabilities. Offenders' obligations are to make things right as much as possible. The community's obligations are to victims, to offenders and for the general welfare of its members. Restorative justice seeks to heal and put right the wrongs. The needs of victims for information, validation, vindication, restitution, testimony, safety and support are the starting points of justice. The process of justice maximizes opportunities for exchange of information, participation, dialogue and mutual consent between victim and offender. Also, the offender's needs and competencies are addressed. Tijdens zijn werk is hij in een winkelcentrum aangevallen door de dronken Robert Hoekstra. Ondanks dat het ondertussen ruim 2,5 jaar geleden is, kan hij het voorval maar niet vergeten. Het heeft toch een behoorlijke impact gehad, ja. Dader Robert draaide volledig door toen hij werd aangesproken op zijn openbare dronkenschap. Uh, op dat moment viel er een, een, een glas uit zijn zonnebril en hij bukte zich om, om dat op te rapen. En mee, toen hij omhoog kwam, begon hij te meppen. Dat ik hem met de dood heb bedreigd. Ik weet je te vinden, ik maak je kapot. Dat zijn kwaaie woorden. 
Hoe gaat het gesprek verlopen als slachtoffer en dader opnieuw tegenover elkaar komen te staan? Ja, u, zit op, is. u zit er met mee en u maakt. Ik, ik heb dat zelf ook. Hè. Ja. U zit er zelf ook mee. Ik denk van ja, waar, waarom gebeurt nou zoiets? De ja. conversation shows, both victim and defender, are affected by what has happened. Luckily, the victim chose to confront the offender with his moral wrongdoing. Whether one's response to wrongdoing is either more strongly focused towards retribution or restoration is dependent on two constructs. Those are crime severity and shared identity. Focusing on the shared identity approach, the choice between retribution or restoration depends on the shared identity and perceptions of value consensus between the victim and perpetrator. The next piece shows that the victim is assessing this shared identity. Als Robert wegloopt, blijft Thij duidelijk met gemengde gevoelens achter. Ja, het is... Uh, als ik hem zo zie... Ja, moet ik zeggen... Uh, in, in, iemand in, in deze toestand, die, dat had ik niet verwacht. Nou, what are the advantages and disadvantages or limitations of a restorative justice approach? Mediation and confrontation give the victim a feeling of satisfaction. According to Godoreo, victims and offenders get the opportunity to better address their problems and come to solutions. Also, society has learned not to label victims and offenders, to not see them as stereotypes. Restorative justice also has its limitations. All parties, victim, offender, and the community have to be willing to participate in the process. Should this not be the case, then restoration is just a loose attempt. Furthermore, restorative justice depends on means and abilities. For the society to take part, there needs to be sufficient guidance, education and training. As for Katie Hutchison, restorative justice brought good outcomes. When common ground is found, we can find solutions together through mutual consensus building and decision making, which creates positive outcomes for all. Restorative justice. It gives you something to think about.